Hi, my name is Scott Heron, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how to tune your cello. You may be in the position where you can't see your cello teacher, you can't get to a music shop, or perhaps you just want to develop the skill yourself to be independent. Well, this video is for you. I would like to introduce you to my patient. This is what I affectionately call my old banger cello. It usually resides up in our attic. It is an old student cello which is out of tune and will hopefully approximate the cello you might be using. I didn't want to use my really good cello which is easy piece to tune, so this is going to be quite a challenge. A word of warning, if you are a primary school student and you're considering tuning the cello yourself, I would strongly recommend that you get an adult to do it for you instead. There are two reasons. Firstly, it requires a lot of strength and secondly, if the adult breaks the string then they will have to pay for a replacement and you won't get shouted at. Fair enough. My students wouldn't usually start to attempt to tune the cello until they were around about grades 6, 7, 8 and they have had a bit of experience with the cello. There are two stages involved in tuning your cello. The first one is to loosen the strings and then to bring it nearly up to pitch with the pegs. And stage two is using the adjusters, which are down here, to bring it fully up to pitch. In this video, I'm going to tune two strings, the A string and the D string, but the procedure is exactly the same for the other strings. The four strings of the cello are the A string, the the D string, the G and the C. So A, D, G and C. Firstly, I'm going to pull the A string peg towards me, like this. And that will loosen the string a little bit and you will hear it unraveling. So it is quite loose. Now I'm going to grab my trusty pencil over here and I'm going to apply some pencil lead to the narrow groove in the bridge where the strings slot into place. So like this, like so. Okay, and then put the string back. I'm then going to do the same thing at the other end of the cello up here, at, which is called the nut. So I'm going to pull the string over a bit and then apply the lead to the groove here where the string slots into place. The reason why we do this is because these are prime places where strings tend to get damaged and break. The lead lubricates the string allowing the string to slide easily in the slot avoiding a tight spot happening between the nut and the tuning peg. I'm now going to introduce you to my tuner app called Guitar Tuner, which is free by the way. It can be used for the cello as well, which I use all the time. You will see on the screen a picture of a cello scroll. I will press the A string on the app and it should buzz. There we go. Okay, this is the note we are aiming for. I'm going to keep that in my ear and turn the A peg and pluck it with my thumb. Sometimes I actually whistle to keep the sound in my ear and I'm going to bring it nearly up to pitch. I'm also going to look at the tuner as well. If you look at the screen, there's a little balloon when the note comes closer into focus. The balloon gets closer to the red line down the centre of the scroll and it will register a number like minus four. When it gets to the target pitch, it dings loudly. So I'm looking at the tuner and listening, comparing the sound of the string to the sound of the tuner. So here we go again. So, okay. So I'm gonna put the sound up a little as well. So here's the A, like that, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the peg towards me 
And then as I turn the peg, I'm gonna push it into the string, into the peg box, and I'm gonna pizzicato it. And it's very, very important to make sure that you push in while you're doing this as well. So where's the A? There we are, so I'm listening to that note. So that's pretty close, what does it say? So that says minus 10, a little bit closer. There we are, minus four, that, that's close enough. So we're very close to the mark. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the D string. So I'm going to turn the D string towards me. Like that, and it's unraveling. Then we're going to get our pencil and we're going to add a little bit of lead here into this groove. Uh, first of all, in, in the string, down here in the bridge. Just listen a little bit more. Like so. Put the string back again. And then we're going to do the same thing at the other end here, which is at the nut. And that lubricates it. As an aside, I would recommend that if all the strings are out of tune, that you don't loosen all of the strings at the same time. I just tuned one string at a time, so three of the strings are still taut. If you tune all four strings at once, that will uh, what will happen is that the bridge will probably come off. The bridge is just attached to the belly with pressure from the strings. It is not super glued, as one parent uh, of one of my students said. If the bridge comes off, there is a chance that the signpost, which is situated just in front of the foot of the bridge on the A string, just here, will collapse. The signpost is a narrow cylindrical piece of wood which carries vibrations between the belly and the back of the cello affecting the tone. It is just wedged into place and you can just about um, see it if you look through the F hole just here. So let's go back to the D string. We've applied the lead, now I'm going to play the D on my tuner and try to keep it in my ear and turn the peg away from me and bring it nearly up to pitch, remembering to push in as I turn. So I'm gonna whistle that. So it's very flat. Oh, and did you see that it unraveled? So that's very, very common. So all I've got to do is make sure that I push in as I turn the peg. So I'll play the D again. Okay, I'm turn. So I don't want to bring it fully up. What's that at now? Minus 27, a bit more. Minus three, that's pretty good, wonderful. So I'm gonna leave it there. Now, a little aside. Another factor which will prevent the strings from slipping is to ensure the string is wound properly. When you're putting the string on, you start by poking the end of the string through the tie, which is the little hole in the peg. As you turn the peg, ensure that the coils wind uniformly from the tie to the inside of the peg box. On some cellos, you will notice that this has not been done properly and it can contribute to the peg slipping out. Another reason that pegs can slip is that on some cheap factory made student cellos, the diameter of the pegs is not perfect. Uh, it's not a perfect match for the hole in the peg box. What I do is to take my cello along to a luthier who will use a peg reamer. This is a cylindrical piece of tapered metal with a handle on the end. Part of it is smooth and part of it has a sharp cutter. This ensures that the tapered peg fits into the tapered hole at exactly the correct depth in the wood. It is a quick and inexpensive job which is really effective. In stage two, we are going to use 
these adjusters are fine tuners. Just here, I'm going to play the A. So it's a little flat, so I'm going to turn the adjuster to the right and we'll hear it coming gradually into focus. And you'll hopefully hear the tuner dinging. Okay, it's getting close now. Very, very close. There we are. Did you hear that tuner ding? Now that the A string is right up to pitch, let's do the same thing on the D string. If there is not a lot of play left in the adjuster, what you can do is to loosen it a lot and then go back to the peg. Play the D on the tuner, tune it up nearly to pitch and finish off with the adjuster. So on this cello here, it's quite tightly in, so I'm going to unwind it like that. And then what I'm going to do is just do a little bit more in the peg. Perfect, and that's it, great. And if you need to, you can use the adjuster to finish it off. It's possible that if you over tighten the string, it may snap. If you go over a bit, it will probably be okay, but just be aware of the risk and try to avoid this as much as possible. The key is to keep listening to and watching the tuner and adjust the tuning very slowly. Incidentally, it is a good idea to change your strings every so often. Old strings have a higher tendency to break and gradually lose their tone quality. Also, always have a spare set of strings in reserve. It's a bit like having a spare tire in your car. In my experience, Sod's law applies and a string often tends to break at the worst possible time. You don't want to be stuck just before an exam or a special performance. Make it part of your cello kit bag with your rosin and end pin holder. I thought I would finish off this video with a little bit of a cheat. So this is my wife's cello over here. Here we go. And for a Christmas present one year, not her main present, I hasten to add, I had these special Whitner pegs fitted. They look the same as standard pegs, but they're mechanical and are easy to turn um, as adjusters are. In fact, the adjusters are redundant. They make tuning your cello absolutely effortless. Let me show you with the A string. So I'll get my boat here. So we're going to tune this down. Are we going to tune it up again? Wow! One of my cellos have had these fitted as well, so I can really recommend them. A set will cost around £120, plus the cost of having them fitted. I'll leave a link in the description for you about them. To finish off the video, I thought I would play you two fun sound effects you can only get if your cello is really, really out of tune. First of all, I'm going to tune the C string right the way down. So there we go. So it sounds like me snoring like this. Then if we tune it even lower, we have a motorbike taking over and then you can rev it up. You'll go far if you can do that. So there's the motorbike just taking over. There it is. And then you can rev it up. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe and hit that cheeky little like button and share this with some of your cello buddies. Until the next video, 
Ciao!